When installing a performance car audio system into a vehicle, it is critical that we do the sound treatment process. This process helps us to avoid unwanted noise like rattles and vibrations, and it helps us to get cleaner sounding bass and better sound quality from our mids and highs. So what does it take to do the sound treatment process on a vehicle? What materials and tools are needed? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car car audio system. I'm currently working on doing another full car audio build here on the channel, so in this video we're going to take a look at the sound treatment process. Now before we get into this, I do want to make an important note. We all know that every car audio system has a budget. You can spend just a little on speakers, subs, and amplifiers and get a certain level of performance, or you can spend a lot more and get a higher level of performance. This is a similar theme for the application of sound treatment. I could very easily use 30 rolls of materials and hundreds of hours of labor sound treating every last square inch of a vehicle. Doing so would be great for an extremely high-end install where things are competition grade, but the point I want to make here is not every install has to have that level of sound treatment to get results. We can actually make a positive improvement with both an entry level budget of sound treatment materials or what I would consider to be more of a mid grade budget of sound treatment materials. I recently did a more entry level upgrade video that I can link for you guys down below where I focused on the most important areas, but in this build we're going to take it to the next level with not only doing the doors and trunk, but also pulling the interior and doing the floor of the vehicle. So we'll go through all that and then towards the end of the video I'll give you guys an idea how much material I ended up using for this mid-level upgrade. Let's dive in. So to get the process started of sound treating the entire vehicle, we need our materials. SoundShield was cool enough to sponsor this project, so a big shout out to them. I want to give you a quick rundown on the different materials that I'm using. The first material here that we're going to be using the most of is the normal SoundShield material. So this material is very similar to what you would see with a typical sound deadening material where it's got that butyl rubber and the foil, but this adds that acoustic foam, which is nice because you basically get two different sound treatment benefits out of this. That first layer of the butyl rubber with the adhesive helps to reduce vibration in panels and reduce resonance. Whereas the closed cell foam that's on top acts as what we call a decoupler. It prevents things from vibrating against each other and creating noise. Check this out really quick. This is always my favorite demo to do with the sound shield material. So this is just a piece of metal and both of these pieces of metal are the same. So take a quick listen to this. And now listen to this. That gives you an idea how it reduces the vibration. Now their next material here is the slim material, which looks like this. The slim material is basically the same as the initial sound shield, other than the fact that it gets rid of that acoustic foam layer. So if you have an area in the vehicle that you can't fit the original sound shield, that's when you go with the slim. You can see it is much more thin. The final material we're gonna be using on the build from them is this material, which is brand new and it's called Wrap It. You can see that we get two rolls of this sound inside insulating tape. What this tape is, is it's basically just the acoustic foam from the original sound shield material. You can see that this does not have a butyl rubber layer. It's just the foam, but what's also super cool is it has the pressure sensitive adhesive. I'm pretty excited about this product here because I actually helped these guys pioneer this product and it's something that's really gonna come in handy for separating wire harnesses and for tackling other areas of the build where we have components rattling together. This acts as a decoupler and I'm excited to to try it out for the first time on this build. Along with all the sound shield materials, we'll also be using a couple of different knives, some cloth automotive tapes, and then some different specialty tools that you see here and some other ones I'm gonna show you in the video. All the links to all the tools and materials are listed down in the video description. So now we can get started. We're gonna come on over to our vehicle, and in this case, I'm pulling the full interior because I want to do sound treatment all inside of the vehicle here. I also wanna do the doors, and that's where we're gonna start pulling off these door panels. So in this video, the vehicle I'm working on is a 2017 Jetta, but I don't want you guys to think, oh, I don't have a Jetta, so this doesn't apply to me. The sound treatment process is very, very similar regardless of the car, van, truck, or SUV that you have. So we're gonna be covering and focusing on the overall process. When you're removing the door panels, you're usually gonna have some sort of trim that is press fit in that needs to be removed with a panel tool, and that will give you access to bolts that you can undo. 
Once those mechanical fasteners are all removed, there are additional press fit fasteners around the outside perimeter, so we can go ahead and unsnap those to pull the door panel off. We can then carefully reach behind the panel here and unplug any of the wiring harnesses. Rather than sound treating one door panel at a time, I like to make sure that I have all four removed, that way I can be consistent in how I apply the materials to each of the panels. Now that we get the first door panel off, we can start applying some of the sound treatment materials. Now on each of the doors, there are three main areas that we need to tackle. The first area we're gonna to want to tackle is the back of the door panel itself. The door panel is made of flimsy plastic that is prone to vibration, so we're gonna to wanna to make sure that on larger flat areas like this here and this here, here and this area, we're gonna to wanna to apply the materials. We're also going to want to look for sources of vibration, potentially these clips, and we want to make sure that we isolate the different materials from each other. But while we're doing all that, we wanna make sure that we do not put material in areas that is gonna mess with the fitment of this panel back onto the door. An example of that would be these here. These are where those bolts come through and actually bolt into the door. We don't wanna mess with that fitment at all, so we need to be careful in this area. The same goes for anything that moves like this door handle. So let's get that done. The first thing that's got to go is these stickers that they put on in the factory. I don't know why it's like this, but I feel like it's so common that these stickers, it's like they're only half stuck on. So listen to this. Nothing but a source of potential issues. So in this case, they gotta go. The next thing I usually need to address is these clips here. Usually on a lot of vehicles, when you move these, they can make a vibration noise. So what I usually like to do is I'll pop them out and I'll just wrap a real small amount of cloth tape around them and then put them back in and that gives enough resistance that they can no longer vibrate. But I actually really like the design of these. These are kind of unique. This is kind of unrelated to the video, but I wanna show you because this is actually kind of a cool design that I like. If you look at these, these have like a little bit of a spring to them. And on the door panel, you can see that there's two layers of this attachment point. So what happens is when we push that in, that little spring kind of pushes pressure up against this. So it actually keeps it nice and tight so it doesn't vibrate. So well done on whoever designed those. This style of clip is definitely a lot harder to pull out than normal clips, but it is nice that we're not worried about rattles. So once you've addressed the clips, the next thing you wanna look for are the little electronic modules. These are usually designed in a way that they can be removed from the door, which makes sense. That way they could be replaced if one goes bad. But the only problem with that is because of that removal, there's a slight amount of play, and I don't know if you guys can hear this. So this is a case where I'll pop that module out and I'll wrap a very, very tiny amount of cloth tape around it. It really takes very, very little tape. You don't wanna mess with the fitment of the piece at all and then I can pop it back in. And now with that very, very small modification, that no longer rattles. So we'll move on to another one here. This one doesn't seem to be an issue. Neither does that one. So luckily it looks like on the rest of these doors, this one doesn't even have anything electrical attached to it at all. So the rest of these doors, we look good to go. Next, in order to prep our surface for applying the sound shield, I need to start cleaning this off. To clean the back side of the panels, we're going to use rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. Always test the back of the plastic just to make sure that it doesn't harm the plastic in any way, but we can just go ahead and wipe that on and allow it to flash off. The one thing we definitely want to avoid on the back of these panels is don't use any products that have any sort of oil in them, things like armor all, anything like that. You do not want to use that to clean this because it's going to mess with the adhesion of the material. So now we can take our material out of the container and in this case I'm going to be using that sound shield slim and the reason for that is because I know the back side of this panel is pretty close to the sheet metal. I'm going to be using the normal sound shield on the sheet metal side so there's nothing wrong with going with the slim material here because our main goal is we want to get rid of the resonance in this panel. For the application process, things are pretty self-explanatory. I get a rough idea by taking a couple of measurements of the panel and I'll cut small squares or rectangles on this piece of cardboard and then I go over to the panel itself and I'm using a wooden roller in order to make sure that I have plenty of pressure sticking that adhesive to the panel after I remove that protective backing. The biggest thing I want you guys to take away from this video is when you're doing sound treatment, you really want to be thinking about where you're applying the material. 
Like I mentioned, I went with the thin materials here because I know that this is gonna be close to the sheet metal anyways, and I know that for the most part, I just want this to stop the resonance in the panel. Whereas closer to the speaker, I used the original sound shield that has that acoustic foam on it, and I did a lot more treatment to really make sure that I get in all the grooves here. The other thing you really have to consider is the engineering behind the panel. You'll notice that I didn't put any right here, and that's because this section is super strong. I have to pretty much put my whole weight on it to even flex it. See how this has these long and really thick ribs added to it? It's good and strong here. Another thing you have to consider is in big curved areas like this, the curve adds a ton of strength as well. Again, I have to literally put my whole pressure of my weight onto my hand to make that flex. Whereas in this location here where it's flat, I mean, I can flex it just pushing basically with my fingers. And again, the other big reason we wanna be careful about where we put these materials is we really want everything to go back together like it came from the factory. I've seen so many guys where they just completely plaster this whole thing with sound treatment materials and then they go to put the door panel back on and it definitely does not fit like it should. So keep those concepts in mind while you're working. I'm gonna get these other ones done real quick and show you. And just like that, through the power of video editing, we now have these doors complete. So now we're gonna move on to doing the sheet metal of the door here and the same concepts are going to apply. This area here, you can see that it has these locations where it has a beam kind of welded into it. So this area is extremely strong, but it's also close to the back side of the door panel. So I'm gonna avoid putting too thick of materials on this. It's already really nice and strong and rigid. There are a lot of curves, which is nice. This is a stronger door than most, but I can still tell by kind of doing the knock test here that this is a little bit weaker in this area. I definitely want to try to apply as much material here as I can. With all the wiring harnesses and fastener locations that are on the sheet metal here, it's not as feasible to just use some squares that are cut out of the material. I want to make more of a custom cut piece, so in order to capture that shape, I start with laying this clear tape on the panel, and then I'll draw out a line. And you guys are always asking about the clear tape, so I'll put a link for you guys down in the video description, which will of course have links to all tools and materials used in this video. Next, I'll lay out my roll of the original sound shield material, and then I'm going to apply that piece of the clear tape on top and carefully follow each of those lines, tracing out and cutting out its profile. There's also quite a few areas that require a small hole to be added. That way I can have clearance for a mounting location for a fastener or for a mounting location holding down a wiring harness. And to make those holes, I'm using this leather punch set. Once all those holes and cutout locations are made, I can carefully remove that clear transfer tape that I used for laying out everything, and I can apply this new piece of the sound treatment material to that inner sheet metal. So we are making progress now on the inner door skin, and remember, I'm intentionally not putting any up here just because I've test fit the panel, and it's a very, very close clearance here. I don't wanna potentially mess with the door handle being able to work properly, and like I said earlier, this area is more than strong enough anyhow that it's really not as prone to resonance or vibration. In some of these areas where it's difficult to get behind the wire harnesses, I just cut little squares that will kind of fit in behind there. And that's a good idea to do anyhow because these wire harnesses can vibrate up against the vehicle. So you can see in these locations, I've just added some small little strips that have that acoustic foam on them to prevent that vibration. The last step now for the doors is we want to apply material on the inside, which is on the inside of the outer door skin. What's nice on this vehicle is we can pop this out right here, and this gives us quite a bit of access. You can see that there is some factory sound treatment materials on the inside here, but it definitely won't hurt to add a little bit more. Again, we just wanna make sure that we check and that we have clearance with our window up and down, but we should be good to go on that, so I'm gonna apply some in there, and I'm also going to apply some onto this piece here, even though it's a little flimsy, it will just help to make it a little bit more solid and have a little bit more weight. As I add these pieces of material inside the door here, I just wanna reiterate the law of diminishing returns. And what that means is if we get something like 25% of the panel coverage on the inside of the door, that's gonna get us something like 90% of the performance benefit. Everything in addition past that 25%, it doesn't get us the same amount of performance increase as that initial amount. 
I mention this because while it would be beneficial to have 100% of the coverage inside the door there, I wanna make this so that it's obtainable budget-wise for the vast majority of people that are watching, and I wanted to restrict myself to more of a material budget. And again, if we're smart about where we place the majority of the materials, in this case, I put more material near the speaker itself, we can get the vast majority of the benefit while sticking within that budget. Now we can do the classic knock test in order to hear how quickly the vibration stops. So now that the doors are completely done, we can turn our attention to the interior. Now, of course, this process is gonna be a little different for every vehicle. I usually like to start with removing the seats first, then I'll remove the trim along the side of the vehicle. I'll take out the center console. I'll take out the back seats, which by the way, I've already taken out the bottom cushion. And I'll also remove the carpeting. And by doing this, we now have access to all the sheet metal on the bottom of the vehicle. And we also have the advantage that it's now a lot easier to run the wiring in a really clean and organized way. This is also the point that you usually get a nice, sweet little tip. Oh yeah. Ooh, some yummy snacks too. So now much like the doors, I'm gonna start with prepping the surface. I'm gonna clean everything off and then I'm gonna cut around any wire harnesses and any holes, add any holes in the material if they need them. And then I'm just gonna stick it on much like usual. And with that, my friends, we now have the entire floor of the vehicle sound treated. Now, overall, I did use two different materials in here. This is the normal sound shield material and then this is the sound shield slim. The reason I went with the slim material in the back here is I know there's not a whole lot of tolerance for these clips to work correctly, so I didn't want to mess with that fitment at all and have a thicker piece of material in here. So again, another good application for the slim. Again, I also make sure that I leave hole cutouts on locations that there are threaded studs or other areas of the vehicle that you might need to get through to access things to fit them. I also generally avoid the seat area, and the reason for that is one, I again don't want to mess with the fitment of the seat, and two, this is engineered to be extremely solid because it is holding the seat. That's where the seat bolts into the vehicle. So we don't really have to worry about that vibrating or resonating nearly as much. Now we can turn our attention to the last area that we're going to address inside the trunk here. As you can imagine, the process for doing the trunk of the vehicle is very similar to inside the car. We remove all of that interior and then we're just going to apply each of our different materials. And with that, the trunk is now complete. Now I did run out of materials, but no big deal. What I was able to do is again, I was able to focus on the areas that need the treatment the most. In other words, flat areas. And usually a good indicator of areas that might need some help are where they've put the factory sound treatment. So they added some around here. So I added a little bit more in those areas as well. The main area in the trunk that needed it here is the floor. This floor tends to resonate and it's hard to see, but I also put some up on the rear deck. Now, a couple other notes here. I do wanna make sure that I put some around the speaker location in close proximity to where the speaker actually is, but I'm holding off on that because I do need to drill out these holes and I need to add some threaded rivets and I need to make custom speaker adapters. You guys will be able to see the rest of this in the build. Also, in this video, I didn't show too much of the wrap it and that's because I wanna make a separate video detailing how this is used because you usually wanna use this in conjunction with your wiring process. So what we can do with the wrap it tape, this is just the closed cell foam with adhesive. And in areas like this where it goes goes a, quite a span without having a fastener tying it to the vehicle, we can put it underneath here and it doesn't add a ton of thickness. It doesn't really mess with the fitment of anything, but it helps prevent this wire bundle from vibrating against the panel. The last thing I know you guys are probably wondering is how much materials did I go through? I went through six of the normal sound shield rolls and then I went through two of the slim rolls. I put quite a bit of the normal sound shield material into the doors. I wanted to make sure they were really treated well. So you could probably get by with only four rolls for a normal sedan. But in this case, I went through six with a little bit more of that treatment. So next time you're upgrading your car audio system, definitely be sure to plan for and to install sound treatment materials. A special thanks to SoundShield for being a sponsor of this video. To find a dealer of SoundShield materials near you or to buy online, check out the links down in the video description. If you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. In the next stage of this build, I'm gonna be making custom speaker rings to fit a larger speaker than what the factory will allow for in the front of the car. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to design, build, and install.